Hi guys, welcome to CA Inter Financial Management MCQs. I am Siyanu Jalota. We are on a mission to be doing every possible question that can be asked in exams. <clears throat> in our regular course, we ensure that everything is done. Your everything means your concept questions, your module questions, case scenarios that are there, the MCQs that are there, tests that are held at the end of each and every chapter. We do try to be ensuring that a student who joins our regular course can be getting 90% or plus in all their subjects. Okay, I specialize in costing and FM. On our YouTube channel, you will be getting lot amount of free resources that ensures that a student might not pay for any subject also, whether it is the CA Inter or it is the CA Final. And these are high quality research content, okay, that is not stolen from anywhere. It is all an individual research and experience of 20 years plus 20 years. Let's start it off with today's question. Today's lecture is all about or today's question is all about capital structure. This is chapter number 5 from your financial management. The question for today is the traditional approach towards the valuation of the firm assumes that. Okay. First, the overall capitalization rate does not change with financial leverage. Okay, there is an optimum capital structure. Okay, the third one. Third one, the total risk is not changed with the changes in the capital structure. And lastly, the markets are perfect. Okay. Now, in case you all know the answer, okay, please comment at this stage A, B, C or D. Okay, see, now <clears throat> we all have done in this case three approaches. One of them was net income approach. Net income approach says that that kind of a capital structure is best where debt is highest. So therefore, wherever debt is highest, automatically our cost will be least because debt is cheaper than equity. That is whatever the NI method says net income method. After NI method came net operating income method. Okay. Same thing was propagated by Modi Glani and Miller also in future. These guys are told that whenever a company will introduce more debt, KO should be falling because debt is cheaper than equity. But then the risk also increases. At that time, shareholders will start to ask for more amount of dividends or will sell off the shares leading to P0 falling. Whether in this case your dividend increases or your market price of equity shares will fall, KE will start to be rising. Whatever the benefit the company gets because of cheaper debt gets exactly offset by increase in KE. And things balance off in such a way that ultimately KO remains constant. Okay. So that was NOI approach, net operating income approach. Okay. After that came traditional approach. That's what this question is all about, traditional approach. Traditional approach says that, traditional approach says that if there is x-axis, okay, if there is y-axis, on x-axis we try to be having debt, on y-axis we try to be having overall cost of capital of the company, that is nothing but KO, okay. It says that whenever a company introduces some amount of debt, okay, debt is cheaper than equity, so therefore KO falls. I'll show you all the graph in a minute. But then if you keep on introducing debt after some particular time, okay, the disadvantage of increase in KE will be far more than the advantage that you get because of cheaper debt and KO will start to be rising. And this is how the graph ultimately will shape up. In this entire thing, what is your optimum capital structure? Optimum capital structure will be that capital structure where KO is going to be least. This is the point where KO is least. If this is the point where KO is least, automatically in this particular case, you all will understand that this is a place whereby the overall cost of capital of the company will be the cheapest. This will be the optimum point. At this particular point of time, whatever is the debt, okay, that should be the optimum level of debt. That is whatever the traditional guys or traditional authors had told us, okay. So therefore, out of the four options, I guess, option number B is there that tells you there is an optimum capital structure. So answer should be B over here. That should be the correct answer. 
that is the correct answer that's it our job is all together done okay with this we finish it off just one thing we are taking good amount of efforts to be ensuring that every concept that is possible in costing and in fm and in ca final scpm is covered up through all these mcqs my aim of solving an mcq is not to tell you the correct answer that you all can see from the module also but basically to tell you the correct logic of doing everything okay thank you so much i'll see you all next time in another question till then take care guys bye